So the next one, let me go back to my projects here. Is um, so using JavaScript to set values. And this is a project that Carol, who's part of our team, was working on with somebody, and she had asked me about it yesterday. They have um they have a field, a matrix field or a field matrix, matrix of fields. And they wanted to be able to assign the values automatically. So if there's a bunch, like there's a bunch of substances that they're checking uh, the dosages on, and rather than having to go through and click, you know, you could set a default value for them, and then, um, but if you had to change them all to like unable to assess, like you'd have to manually go through and click all of them at once, or if you wanted to go through and set them as none, you'd have to you know go through and click them all at once, <clears throat> or if you wanted to reset them, you'd have to go through and hit the reset link uh, one at a time. There was no way to reset or assign a value um all at once um and the person was having you know it's just something to save time if there was a way to do that so i thought about it yesterday and worked on it and <clears throat> came up with this um using the javascript injector so i created a field with buttons um so if, like let's say i just save we'll just put some random values here uh and we'll save it and so I created these buttons. And so if I want to set them all to unable to assess, if I click that, it just automatically assigns that value to all of those. Uh, but if I refresh, they go back to the way they are. So they, it, it changes the value, but it doesn't commit them unless you save the page. So if I hit unable and then save, now they're all going to say uh, unable to assess. So instead of having to go through and click all these, one at a time and and this is in this demo there's only a few of them but in, in carol's project there's quite a few of them um so and then the same thing for none setting these to none um and, and then clearing them all so if i clear them all and hit save and stay now they're all gone um so what i did first was i cre i created buttons for this uh, so let me go to the designer and show you red cap doesn't like there's a button HTML tag, which is like, um, let me open up another notepad here. That's like button. And it, it allows you to basically like create a button. So you don't have to do all the CSS styling to make the buttons look nice. Uh, but for some reason, RedCap doesn't like this because it just automatically like will turn it to a paragraph tag and then you lose all that functionality. Uh, so what I did was I created, um, these are actually links, they're hyperlinks. And then what I'm doing is I'm just styling them. I'm, and uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but Bootstrap is built into RedCap. And so you can use Bootstrap styling and, and classes. And what Bootstrap is, is it's, it's a design system that allows you, like they've basically built out all the nice things you would like, like how do you want to style checkboxes and input fields and buttons and all this stuff. And they have all these things built into classes and each of those classes uh, has its own CSS styling. So instead of you having to reinvent the wheel and design everything yourself, you can just throw a class onto something and it'll give you that, that uh, style. So if we go to Bootstrap site and you can see here, I was Googling Bootstrap buttons. Uh, it's the same sort of thing here. So like these styling, uh, if you want a button that's primary or secondary, you know, these kinds of things, you just put in these classes. So this is a class of button and a class of button primary would be this one here. And you can see this is a button, you know, this is the HTML would be how it should be. It should be button with a type of button. Um, and so instead of you having to design all this stuff yourself, and you can see here, these are all the components that they build. If you want like alerts, you want these you know instead of you having to style different colors and things like this and this is a way for you to have a cohesive sort of design through your site instead of you having to build everything uh off the shelf uh so what i did was i just took this um this link here and i gave it and i gave it an id because i'm going to use this id for the javascript but i'm giving it a button a class of button button outline primary which here you can see down here 
is it gives me these outlined buttons. So whenever I hover over them, they change color versus these, which they kind of slightly darken. You know, you can kind of see that you're hovering on them, but some like danger, you can kind of barely see that you're hovering on it. Some of these are a little harder to tell, especially like the dark one. But I like the outline buttons because you can really tell which one you're on. Um, so I added that class. The other thing I did was uh, I did add my own styling for some of this, but this margin here is just to give some padding around the buttons, separating them from each other and some room on the top. And then this is the important one. I had to put text decoration none and important because as you guys probably all know, hyperlinks ha are like underlined by default to show people that they're a hyperlink. And so um, I had to remove that. So you do that by saying text decoration is none. And then I have to say important because there's the way red cap and CSS rules are applied uh, depending on where they're applied. So other things can be, uh, can outrank other things. And so that's why it's called cascading style sheets because depending on where the rules are, they cascade down and important kind of like short circuits that. And it says that no matter where this lives in the code, this is the most important rule. So this, this prevents any other rules from, from replying to that. And then I just have a blank uh, pound sign here, which is just a, a, a looks like a, a dummy link. It doesn't go anywhere. Uh, so I'm creating three buttons. One is with an idea of button unable, uh, one with button none, and one with button clear. Um, so that's just these three here. And then um, I created my text boxes, and in, in, and Carol's project uses the matrix, or it's like it's it's mimicking a matrix, but they're kind of separate. But the important thing here is the values that I have. So for unable, I just have negative uh, 99 and then none would be zero, one and two and three. Um, and then you can see here in, in red cap, when I click on inspect for these, um, you can see there's five and you can see as I'm, as I'm hovering through these, um, red cap is selecting each one of those. And what happens is, uh, each one of these has an ID. So this ID for the first radio button is option, it's opt alcohol negative 99. And if I go to the next one, it's underscore zero and then underscore one. And so what I'm doing is I, this is important for me because when I'm using JavaScript, I'm using that ID to target that specific radio button. So if I wanna target this radio button here, uh, this first one, for alcohol, then I need to know what ID that is uh, because then I'm gonna be messing with the properties of that. Uh, so with the code, here's the code that I used and let me make this bigger so you can see. So for the first button, button enable, which is this one, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm adding this checked property uh, and I'm saying checked is true. So I'm adding a property to this first uh, negative 99. And what I'm doing is then I'm also setting the check property as false for the other four options. And so this is for the alcohol one, this is for the, the benzo, and this is for cannabis, and then this is for tobacco. So what I'm doing is I'm basically just going through and setting, I'm just turning this one off, turning this one on and turning these off and turning this one on and turning these off. Now, red cap has a thing where just because you set this value doesn't mean that that's the value that's that's being, it's it's a value that's being stored, but it's not coming from this radio box. Anytime you check a radio button, there's a hidden field in red cap. We don't see any of it, but it grabs the value from this and puts it in this field. It's kind of a placeholder. And it does that, I'm assuming it does that for every field you have. There's like a separate hidden field for each one of these. And then when you hit save, the values in those fields are what get put into the database. Um, and so let me close this. Uh, so that's what this is down here, this document.forms uh, form alcohol.value. So this is the, the element that I need to actually set the value in. And the value that I need is that uh, value that I set for the, the uh, code. So you, if you remember, it's negative 99, zero, one, two, and three. So if I want these to be uh, all unable to assess, then I need to set all four of these values to negative 99. So what I'm doing is this is just for the, the UI, 
I'm just setting this property to false for all of these and this one to true. And then here I'm actually assigning the value that I want to be stored in the database uh, whenever I click on this. And if we go back to, so let me just add, let me just add some of these so we can see. Um, if I right click on this uh, radio button here and go back to inspect, you can see here at the end, well, let me, I think I make that bigger. Um, but then I lose my scroll bar. Um, oh no, here we go, it wraps around. Uh, so here you can see that now this option for alcohol three is checked. And if we go to one of these other, like even over here for alcohol zero, like you can see right here after value three, this has checked, but here it says value zero. So this is not checked. So basically what I'm doing is I'm adding that checked or removing that checked property. That's that's how uh, that's how this displays whether it's been selected or not. Um, so for the unable to assess, what I'm doing is I'm doing you know I'm setting the value for the first one, setting the values for the rest of them is false. Now for the the button none, I'm doing the same thing, but I'm setting it for the second value. So I want none to be true. And so I'm setting that to be checked and the rest of these to be false. And then I'm also setting the value for each of those, those fields as zero. And then same thing for the last one is I'm just clearing everything. So these are all false. So I'm just setting false for everything, every radio button. And then for the, the value, I'm just putting in an empty string. And so that's the value that gets passed to the uh, database. So it's fairly simple. The hard part is just making sure that you have, that you're accounting for all of your options and all your fields. So if Carol had a field of like 20 different substances, she would have to make sure that instead of just five here, it's, it's gonna be 20 and it's just gonna be a lot of copy and paste. And you just have to make sure that you're setting, you know, the, the things that are true and false. And there's, I'm sure there's a way to, to uh, refactor this to where it loops. You could probably set an array to where it loops through all these fields. So that way you're only have to, having to assign these fields once. Uh, this is kind of a quick and dirty solution uh, that I came up with yesterday. So I'm sure there's definitely ways to refactor it. But, you know, this is, this. in some ways I like doing things this way because at least you can see everything that's happening. You're not relying on arrays. And, you know, because some people may not be familiar with like more complex code and it's harder for them to imagine what's going on. Whereas if you see everything spelled out this way, you, you know exactly as, what's going on as you're walking through each bit of code. And so uh, sometimes it's more helpful to do it this way. Um, and, and whenever I build these projects and when I build these codes, this is exactly what I do. Like the first thing I'll do is none of this code is here. What I'll do is I'll just make sure these buttons are working. So I'll put an alert in here that just says, hey, I got clicked or hey, this click works. And you know, and then I'll start building things out from there. So a lot of it is trial and error for me and getting things working. Because the other thing I had a problem with was I was able to get the button unable to work and the button none to work, but the button clear wasn't working. Because what I tried to do is I tried to be clever and use the, because if you click on reset here, that resets it. So I was like, oh, well, I don't need to write my own code for that. I can just grab the function that this is, you know, that this is using and, and do that. And so I did that for all four of these, but the weird thing was it was only working on the first one, like this function called like reset all value or something. It was working and it would just, it would just clear out the first one and then it would just ignore the rest. And I, I, you know, I was hitting my head trying to figure out like, how do I loop through? How do I grab these functions? How do I have them like, how do I have them uh, go through like multiple times and things like this? How do I call this function multiple times? And then eventually I, I went back and, and just was like, oh, well, if I can just set this value, value to an empty string, maybe that'll work. And that was, that worked. It was, you know, so it was one of those things where like an, a, an easier solution presented itself and, and I didn't have to be very clever. Um, so uh, this would be very helpful if you have a long string of, uh, values that you need to set. Like if somebody has, um, I don't know, you know, if there's a lot of measurements that you have to take and if there's a test that didn't get done and you just want to make sure that all those measurements are marked as like not applicable or something like that, instead of you having to go through and click every single one of them, you can just say like, you know, not applicable and it would just do it for everything. Um, 
So, so yeah. let me just interject here. Um, sure. The the project I'm working on actually isn't using just uh, radio buttons. It has a matrix. So it's a little bit different in this. Um, I figured out, I was doing the matrix and I could not for the life of me figure out how to do a default to begin with. And then I read more documentation and found that you do, there is an option to adding a default. So um, as you open up the form that I'm using now, everything is gonna be set to it, unable to assess as a default. But um, I'm taking Manny's code now and trying to adjust it to the default field names or the matrix field names and it's a little bit different but it's still going to work I think the way we need it to and so this is very helpful I have a couple of different matrices like this with 10 to 15 different items and and the user was like it's taking me so much time just to click you know none 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 and uh, these functions are going to be greatly appreciated by my users. Yeah, and to add on that, when Carol and I were talking yesterday, we were trying to think of other ways to to kind of configure this. So, like maybe asking a question, you know, were you able to assess all you know substances or something? And if you say no, then it's you know you could set those values that way, or you know not have these pop up, or you know have a have a check of a question that just says which substances were you able to assess and then you'd have to select all the substances and use branching logic to show the field for each one and it was just one of those things where like you could probably do it that way but you're adding a level of complexity because now you have to ask like multiple questions just to, and and like kind of nested branching logic to kind of drill down to these sorts of like questions whereas if you just have the buttons you could you, you know you would just be like nope can't do it you know or oh they're all none you know and that kind of thing or if you mess up i mean i think this is really valuable too because if you mess up you just clear them all right away and you're like i'm just going to start back from scratch uh kind of thing and i think that'll be helpful on a lot of other projects and this doesn't have to just be for uh radio buttons you know any uh you can have it on input fields or check boxes things like that um so it's just all about figuring out where that code lives for that uh you know that button or that you know these are all radio buttons and so you're just finding where that input is uh but if it was a text field like here this incomplete uh you know it's there's going to be another you know this is going to be another field that kind of thing so if you have a bunch of text fields you can do the same thing if you know where to find what what the id is for that for that input or you know check boxes or notes fields or things like that um you know, and you could you could even set it to where it basically could clear out all the values of a form. Like if you just want to start from scratch, you just clear them all out. 